Hey guys, we're back again for our second uh, discussion in the studio. I'm Ben, and today I'm joined in the studio uh, with Caleb, we've got Bill, and Craig with us. Uh, today's discussion, we're going to start off by sharing praise reports or godly insight of the week, and then we're going to review our scripture from today's sermon that Bill talked about, which was Galatians chapter 2, and then we're going to close in some prayer. So uh, for our listeners out there, if you have any feedback or you want to join the conversation, we encourage you to go ahead and leave a comment in the section below. Um, if you'd like to keep it private or you have a prayer request, please message us at our email. It is kflklpfm at gmail.com with praise reports. Start with Bill here. So, uh, Oh, praise report. Caleb. You know, um, there's all kinds of things to be thankful for, obviously. And most of the time we just don't focus on those things to be thankful for. But, you know, this past Monday, uh, I have a, uh, a friend of mine. He's also a member of the church here, but he's a, he's a close friend of mine. His name is Melvin. And Melvin is 84, 85 years old now. His wife died a year ago, uh, and he cared for her. In the last five, six years of her life, he cared exclusively for her. Her memory was gone, all of that. But I, I went up, paid a visit on him and, and asked him, what are you doing with your with your time now that, you know, Donna's not here and all that time you spent caring for her, what do you do with time? He says, you know, I kind of reflect on life a lot more. And I just spend a lot of time in the Word and, and just prepare myself because I know that someday I'm going, you know, he's 84, 85 years old. He's not unrealistic in his expectations. You know, and then uh, his brother was a pastor. Um, a lot of people don't realize that. But his, his brother had a lot of commentaries and Melvin gave me two commentaries. But one of them was Jameson... Fawcett and Brown's commentary. And that's kind of a standard, an excellent commentary. It's kind of a good standard one. Um, and I have a, a love affair with the printed page. I, I don't care too much for doing all my work on Bible programs. I like to open up the page and sit there and touch it. And, um, and so I actually got a Jameson, Fawcett and Brown commentary for free. But mostly more important was that Melvin gave it to me, my good friend, my older brother. Uh, and that's kind of a selfish praise report, but I thank God for my relationship with Mel. I've learned a lot at, at the feet of an older man. Mm -hmm. So That's really good. Craig, do you have a godly insight you'd like to share? Mm. I actually didn't have anything prepared. <laughs> if you remember, I, I said... You quit that, your job, didn't you? I did. Well, praise God, praise the Lord for it then. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Assuming it was the right decision. <laughs> oh, I, I think it was definitely the right decision. Um I think, I think the Lord's kind of been using this whole job scenario just to kind of prepare me for the next stage of life. I think that's where we're headed now. I'm seriously looking at not pursuing a, yet another career. I'm thinking more along the lines of trying to do something for myself business-wise mm -hmm. that I can still, you know, help support the family. I've got my, mm -hmm. my retirement. Sure. Mm -hmm. So we're not, we're not hurting for cash or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. but I've just got out of a... It was a really negative environment, and I'm just thankful to be out of that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. So much stress in that environment. Sure. So. Cool. Good. Caleb, do you have anything you'd like to share? Yeah. Well, you know, as far as as far as uh, praise reports, um, well, for for me, I'm 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 thankful that my family does not have the uh, the the crud that's been going around anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we yeah. kind of flushed that out of. Too. We kind of flushed that out of the house, so um, being being very thankful for God's provision in, in uh, taking care of us, and uh, despite the, the the problems that we have periodically, you know, that God just uh, continues to to show us His grace. So, Amen. Mm -hmm. so mine's is kind of an insight of the week. Uh, I follow Skip Isaac. He's a pastor in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and uh, he he shared a quote. He said, "A uh, Christian should be a good citizen." until being a good citizen means being a bad Christian. Yeah. And that, that just struck me as something that we kind of take for granted in the world we live in in the United States. We're, we're so, personally, I'm thankful for the, the rights and the privileges we have to, to meet and just to talk about our faith. But but this quote here <laughs> really challenges us to, to walk it out, mm -hmm. even when times get tough. So I really appreciated that, uh, that boldness. Um, so it's refreshing to see. That's right. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my praise report. Right now we'll go ahead and transition. Um, thanks everyone for sharing your praise reports. Let's get into our primary discussion. So it was the study of Galatians chapter 2. That's what Bill talked about today. 
Last week, we talked about our father's heart for his children in our little discussion in here. This week, we'll take a look at the importance of defending the faith. I think that'll kind of build on itself as the next couple of weeks come along. Um, but that's a great example that was left by our brother, the Apostle Paul. Uh, so Paul's testimony, it stands as one of the strongest examples of a person defending their faith. I want to focus on verses 16 and 20 to 21 from chapter 2 for our discussion. So we see Paul, he adamantly is reminding the Galatian church that we should be justified by our faith in Christ alone. Mm -hmm. Um, Reminds me of the song, you know, in Christ alone. Uh, The verse that that makes a bold statement is 216. It says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not of the works of the law. For the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. So, um, why do you think people tend to look to man-made things for security? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe open up for discussion on that thought. You want me to open up? Does anyone here feel strongly about this? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll open up and you guys comment. And yeah. we'll, okay, so fair enough. Why, so what the question is, is why do we tend to? Yeah. You think? know, um, I think... Works have a tendency to appeal to our pride in that we feel like we have to do something to make ourselves better. I mean, how many times have you talked to another Christian and they said, well, I'm working on that issue. No, don't work on it. Submit it to the Lord. You can't fix yourself. You can't reform this old nature. It has to be renewed, you know, the renewal internally. So I think that our our own human pride, it appeals the idea of works or, or somehow earning my way. It just, you know, when, when you say to somebody, well, your works will do you no good whatsoever in terms of eternal justification, that's a blow to the pride. You're saying that I'm, I'm you know, I'm condemned before God and there's not a thing I can do about it? Pretty much. But, you know, that's the truth. It's a humbling thing and, and most of us don't like that. See, if I do works, then I can try to earn my way and that appeals to me. So I think that's Making kind of... personal. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that's kind of where that comes from. Yeah, I know. I know when we when we went through the the flood in 2011 here in Minot, um, it was it was kind of an interesting thought. You know, Minot grouped together, and and you know we we as a community, and I and I include myself in that. We we had pride in in who we are as as Minotians, and we're 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 growing, and and we're going to rebuild, and 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 the thought that. Well, no, that, that actually is not necessarily a good thing. We, mm-hmm. we, we shouldn't be having the pride in these abilities mm-hmm. of our own abilities to, to do things. Right. It's, it's purely sure. Christ right. that, is, that right. has done it. We take responsibility mm-hmm. to totally. do what we have to do, totally. but not mm-hmm. to take pride in You hear that civic pride, city pride, mm-hmm. community pride. You be careful. Let's do our, be responsible and let's thank God mm-hmm. that we live in a community that takes responsibility. Yeah. Um, so an- another aspect of this that I was reading about um, when I was kind of studying about uh, this particular chapter, um, I saw a cross-reference to Acts chapter 10. Um, so kind of interested to see, uh, maybe Bill, what your thoughts are on it. Um, everyone else can chime in too, of course. Um, mm-hmm. But it showed this relationship with Peter and Paul and how they originally disagreed on whether or not a Gentile or a non-Jewish person could become a Christian. Um, are you guys familiar kind of with mm-hmm. that? that connection to this scripture? Well, I, I understand Paul rebuking Peter here in Galatians 2. I'm trying to think of the Acts 10 where they disagree. Yeah. What, what verse is that? Um, like at the very end of Acts 10, it <clears throat> talks about how Peter had a, a vision. Yep. And originally he was teaching um, the opposite way around. He has this vision and it corrects himself sure. to, okay. so we're to talking Paul. About, so he comes right. to an agreement. We're talking him. about Joppa and on the roof of Simon the Tanner. Mm. Right, uh, that that's I, I think that's leading up to it, but the, mm. the discussion being um, part of the church and Paul was coming in and and saying mm. you know this is it's by faith you know the, the Gentiles don't have to become Jews and Peter right. said stood up and said yeah you know what what Paul is telling you is true I mean right. that is because mm-hmm. because I had this vision and and mm-hmm. and God showed right. me that that what right what, uh, God yeah, calls okay. clean <clears throat> right you know, so is yeah. clean so the vision that he had in Joppa. 
switching him over, you mean? Getting him to understand grace as it relates to the Gentiles and not the law. Is that what you're talking about? Okay. Yeah. I just, just <laughs> want to make sure, like, I'm okay, I'm trying to think of this here. So, yeah, I read it, and I was yeah. kind of like, oh, okay, I didn't realize this. So you kind of see connections where you didn't right. notice them before. And, and like we said, you know, the early church, being predominantly Jewish, mm-hmm. especially in Jerusalem, uh, this is a transitional time. You said there are the 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 disbelievers who who still maintained that the law was the only way to be saved, and and so they were disbelievers. They didn't believe in in Jesus the Messiah, but there were also the misbelievers, those who were in that transition, who who believed in the justification of the Messiah, but the law being such a, an issue of personal identity, they they were having a hard time letting it go. And we have to remember that that's a transitional time in the church, mm-hmm. so. You know, um, obviously Galatians helps that um, the Acts chapter 15 and the church council that finally said, hey, we need to just, you know, recognize what God is doing. Please understand that the church council in Acts 15 didn't determine what the truth was. It recognized the truth as it was being revealed by God. Right. And and so I don't think that answered your question. (laughs) <laughs> but I feel it's, it's better. Good. It's a good discussion. <laughs> you know, bring it back to the to Jesus. Like, why do you think this fundamental truth that Paul is arguing here is important? Because mm. um, mm. they were arguing about uh, circumcision and that whole thing. Yeah. Um, but why is it important mm-hmm. today? The the idea of faith in Christ alone versus right. uh, your works or or mm-hmm. obeying the law. I mean, what do you guys think? Mm. Well, there's a lot of. There's a lot of things. I mean, you know, back to what we were saying before, you know, that, that pride, um, there's a lot of things that we try to do to, to circumvent the fact that all we need is Christ, you Mm -hmm. know, and, and, and I've known, I know I've known quite a few, um, people, very good friends of mine who went, you know, like Bill said this morning, went right back under the law because they figured that, that you know, God would be more happy with them if they did that, or, or they would, they would be, you know, more enlightened or they would have a better, um, a better chance of getting into heaven, I suppose, you know, and, and that, that undermines the entire gospel, the entire gospel, the the basis of the gospel, it, it, it cuts the, cuts the carpet right out from underneath. Right. Yeah. The law is predicated on, on human performance. God says, if you do these things, I will bless you. If you don't do these things, I will curse you. Right. But it's all predicated on, on human ability. You know, the gospel we can't do is predicated on Christ's ability and his ability alone. It and therefore, already finished. And it's Absolutely already finished, done. yeah. Right. It is finished. Eight in full. So, Taleo. Yeah. Done deal. Yeah, they say, say there's no such thing as a free lunch, but I think... Jesus <laughs> has offered us something very yeah, valuable. Yeah, he offers like yeah, five thousand at <laughs> one time, seven thousand. Yeah, yeah. It is a free lunch. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and shift gears into the, the last segment here. Just some prayer requests, um, things to be praying over for our country. Kind of praising God. So uh, Pastor Skip Heidzik, uh, he had surgery mm-hmm. uh, this week to relieve some tension, um, and apparently it went really well. So praise God that that's that he's yeah. in recovery. So yeah, he actually had a brain yeah. a brain bleed, and they had mm-hmm. to you know that pressure that was there. They had to relieve that. But yeah, yeah, he's doing and you know Skip's not a young guy, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> he preaches like a young guy, but if you look yeah. at him, he's you know old man time is running alongside of him too. So yeah, I mean you can also listen to him on KFOK. He's on at nine a.m. So mm-hmm. the show's called the Connection. Yeah. Absolutely. So he's a, I, I like his teaching. It's very structured, very mm-hmm. uh, methodical. Yep. Um, he very much studies yep. the Bible. Very, very articulate. Articulate, yeah. Yeah, really absolutely. Good. Well, well presented. Yeah, logical. Yeah, it's really one of our anchor shows on KFLK, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah we've had, a, I think we've been airing him since the very beginning. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. so that's something I'll pray for. Yeah. Prayer request? All the division in our country, we mm-hmm. really need to pray for our president. Mm-hmm. He uh, is under a lot of pressure from both sides, really, honestly. Mm-hmm. The whole impeachment process and the the ongoing efforts to divide, continue to divide the country is just, mm-hmm. you know, it's really, it's really a bad mm-hmm. scenario that we're in and mm-hmm. fits right in with where the world is going. Yeah, yeah, yeah if you, whether you, whether you agree with him or not, 
that, he's that's, our president. That's beside the point. He, he is our president, and we need, <clears throat> and we need to pray for him. And yeah. he's the leader that God yeah. put in place and the, for um, this time. Right, so. and this tendency to to circumvent the constitutional process oh. in, ever, in, in an effort to uh, to achieve a political ends. This is what will destroy us, you know. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, what our, our, our political together? right, our political situation is really a reflection of society. It anyway, Absolutely. Right, we vote Absolutely. those people because they represent our views, and now there yep. they are. Mm-hmm. And you know, and as I, I stated a few weeks ago, Trump is really the uh, he's an obstacle towards an, an intended end, and that's why he's catching. And I think, honestly, I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theory guy. But I think there's some strings being pulled from higher than the Democrats, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think so, too. But He's but, a speed bump. Sure. Yeah. But uh, we need to pray for our national leaders, for sure. Yep. Okay. So. Okay. Well, how about, I'll open up in prayer, um, and then, Bill, you can close. Okay. And then uh, we'll kind of conclude from there. Um, so. Uh, Father God, thank you for bringing us all here together to to just glorify you and talk about your word uh, and just what you what you're doing uh, through through us and, and through the, through the Bible and the teachings of Galatians. Uh, what a what a wonderful uh, testimony that, that Apostle Paul is sharing and just about that correcting uh, correcting the Galatians, Lord. So I just pray for uh, Pastor Skip Heidzik, Lord, that you would continue to just heal his body as he recovers this week. Um, and I just pray that anyone out there that is going through a, a rough time, whether they're in the hospital or uh, just, just anywhere in a recovery home, that um, as they recover from surgery or whatever uh, ailment they're, they're recovering from, Lord, that, that you would just meet them where they're at, um, that they would hear, hear your word um, in whatever way possible, whether that's through KFLK or or just just a passerby Lord that that wants to share about you with them Lord so just pray you would uh, give people the boldness to to reach out uh, to those that are hurting and, and in need Lord so we we just we thank you for for giving us uh, the ability to reach out and, and and be your hands and feet Lord Father I do pray just uh, for us as as Americans Lord. Uh, we pray for our government, Lord, and, and the things that are happening there, Lord, are, are heartbreaking. Um, whichever side of the aisle you stand on, it's, it's not a good situation. But, Lord, as, as your people, Lord, I pray we would stand for the truth, like Paul stood for the truth in Galatians 2. Um, Lord, may we not compromise on issues of truth. And, and may, Lord, we share the gospel as we pray for our government, and our leaders, Lord, may we share the gospel around us um, so that ultimately, Lord, lives are changed. Not necessarily presidential administrations, Lord, but we're looking for changed lives, Lord, uh, renewed by you. Uh, people who come to faith in Christ and are filled with the Spirit and take a stand, Lord, and, and are faithful to share the gospel that they've received. So, Lord, please, I pray for us four here, for those in the listening audience Lord, fill us with your spirit. Find us faithful, Lord, to share the gospel to the whosoever. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So if you've joined us um, to this point in the discussion, so we'd like to thank you for for listening. Hope some of this was a blessing for you. Uh, You can find us on Instagram, the Flock Minot. Just search for us there. Uh, We we're still trying to figure out what to post there, but we have a mixture of memes and Bible verses. So hopefully mm-hmm. that could be uh, some uh, encouragement for you. Feel free to check those out. We're also posting a lot of Bible verses actually to the Calvary Chapel Minot Instagram page. So like us on there, follow us. And again, you can email us with prayer requests or feedback for the station. Uh, KFLK LPFM at gmail.com is where you can find us. And if you enjoyed, enjoyed this conversation, please give it a thumbs up. Share KFLK with a friend. Let them know that we're here broadcasting systematic teaching of the Bible, line by line, verse by verse, throughout the entire day. There's a new pastor on every 30 minutes. So tune in. We have a mobile app. You can download it on Android, uh, Google Play Store, or the iOS Apple Store, uh, whatever device you have, whatever your your favorite is. Um, 
I'm personally an Android guy. Um, some people are <laughs> Apple. My wife is, so it's it's a point of it's a point of contention. There. Yeah, I think you sold yeah. your soul either way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe we should just give up our phones. I don't no. Know. no, no, it's, it's no. Fine. Anathema. <laughs> no. But download the download the the app. Yeah, so totally. Mm. KFLK or Calvary Chapel Minot, it's free. Definitely. Um, so next week, I think we're getting into Galatians chapter 3. Is that right? Galatians chapter 3, Paul will begin to defend the idea of justification by faith in chapters 3 and 4. Awesome. Sounds good. So thanks for listening, everybody. Um, I think we'll go ahead and stop here. So thanks again for hanging out in the studio. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Caleb. So we'll see you guys next week. Uh, have a great week. Be blessed. Mm -hmm. See you later. Live loud. Mm-hmm. <laughs>